it actually works. That's amazing. So I've got a small problem. This is my ESP32ZX Spectrum board with its um, touch matrix keyboard. So it's using 13 touch pins and we're multiplexing those across the keyboard. And it works really well. Um, so I can give you a quick demo here. So we go into basic, we can do 10, print, and here we hit a problem. So if I try and do symbol shift and P to get the double quote marks, you can see we get a weird combination of characters. We can't do combined buttons. So delete kind of works because it's on different characters. If we try and go into extended mode, then we can't do that either. We get all sorts of weird characters coming out. It's basically, it works as long as you only do individual characters. Now, I can work around this by using sticky keys, so I can make it so that symbol shift sticks on, and then you can do P to get quote marks, but it's not ideal. I need a bit of a solution, so let's do some experiments. So just how does this touch stuff work anyway? Well, what I've done is I've hooked up a touch pin to my oscilloscope. It's extremely sensitive, so I just need to move close to the touch pin, and it lights up, uh, which is wired up to the RGB LED here. And if we look at the trace on the oscilloscope, when I'm moving close, you can see it seems to expand slightly. So this regularly repeated pattern is what the ESP32 is sending out over the touch pin. And it's basically, if we zoom in, we can see it's just a sawtooth. Now, when I move close to the pin, you can see how that expands out. So what the ESP32 does is it times how long it takes for the pad to charge up and down between two certain voltages. And it uses that to determine if something's touching it because the capacitance changes based on is someone near or far away. So when we're close, there's more capacitance, so it takes longer to charge up and down. And when we're not touching, the capacitance goes down and it takes the same amount of time to charge and discharge. So it's really just an analog signal. So what I was thinking is I found these nice ICs. They've been around for absolutely ever. So they're cheap as chips and there's multiple manufacturers who make them. So what we should be able to do is multiplex our touch pins. Now, we can multiplex one pin out to eight touch pins. So if I've got five of these chips, that will give me 40 touch pads, which would be one touch pad for each individual key of the Spectrum keyboard. Now, the only thing is, there is an on resistance of this multiplexer. So what I wanna check is does the touch still work when you run it through a resistor? So what I'll do is I'll just stick my touch pin in there, and I've got a 270 ohm resistor so let's stick that in there. Now let's see, if I touch it, it still works. So that's pretty promising. So these multiplexer ICs might be the solution to my problem. So I've ordered a bunch of these um, ICs and I've wired one up. So what I've got here is I've got eight normal GPIO pins, just drive some LEDs to indicate if something's been touched. I've got this one touch pin going into a multiplexer and I've got three address lines. So in theory, if this works, touching these little pads should indicate a touch. And it actually works. That's amazing. So I can touch multiple pads and I can detect them individually. So that's working amazingly well. So I've got just one touch pad multiplexing out to eight different inputs. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven, eight. And I can touch them all at the same time and I can detect it and I can detect them individually. So this should solve my Spectrum keyboard issue. So I think it's time to jump into KiCad and get this designed up because I think this is going to work amazingly well. I'm really pleased. That's incredible. But first time, amazing. One eternity later. So I'm not going to force you to watch a whole bunch of keycad uh, messing around, but um, here's our new ICs. So we've got one, two, three, four, five multiplexer ICs. So each of these take one touch pin. So we have five touch pins and each touch pin is being multiplexed out to eight touch pads. So we have five times eight, which is our 40 spectrum keys. So here's all the keys here. We have individual bits going to the uh, multiplexers. Uh, if we look on the PCB, this uh, was quite a pain to root, but I did manage to root it on two, um, two layers. So that's pretty good. For, uh, for a while I was um, switching to four layers, thinking I'd need to do that, but I managed to root it on just two layers. Um, is it routing or routing? Routing, routing? Let me know in the comments, routing or routing, which is it when it comes to PCBs? So here's our five ICs that do the multiplexing. 
There's a few other changes on the board. So there's a new SD card um, socket. This one's a lot cheaper than the one I was using, so we've saved a bit of bomb costs. Um, some new buttons. Uh, these are now side buttons rather than top buttons. We've got an on-off switch. Um, and we have our expansion port. So I'm really excited about this expansion port. I think we might have to do something quite interesting with this, but uh, that will be for a future video. And we have uh, the two connectors for the displays. So I've got two displays that I'm looking at. One of them has 18 pins, and the other one has, uh, I think that's 10 pins. And these are also routed out to the um, expansion port. So that's gonna be quite interesting. Um, so yeah, so need to get this sent off to PCB way now. And uh, hopefully I've not made any mistakes. I've double checked everything. I think it's correct. Um, everything looks right. Schematic matches, all the DRCs are right. So fingers crossed, I've not messed it up. So the uh, new boards have arrived from PCB way. I have to say, they look absolutely fantastic. So here's our new um, ICs that do all the attached multiplexing. They worked out so cheap, it's incredible. I think I got these for 20 cents a piece. Um, so that's amazing. Doesn't add much to the bomb at all. Now, um, it's the PCB Way 10th anniversary. So if you want some PCBs, you should go over and check them out. They are really great. I can recommend them. I mean, they've made this. What more can you ask for? So let's test out the actual keyboard. So let's have a look, go into basic. And let's try and write something. So let's do the old uh, hello world. So now I should be able to use symbol shift and P to get quotes. And that actually works. And I can shift and zero for delete. Hello world, uh, symbol shift P, and then symbol shift O for a, um, oh, let's see, let's put a space in, space, symbol shift P, symbol shift O. It's working brilliantly. Uh, this is absolutely amazing. There we go, hello world. Oops, hello world 10. Looks like I can't use basic anymore, print 10. So let's see, how do we do edit? Uh, so that's shift one, no. Edit, there we go, cool, it's coming back to me. So go to 10, enter, run. There we go, hello world, it works. Let's try a quick game. Okay, Manic Miner. So the keyboard's really responsive as well, even though we're having to scan it, it's still amazingly good. So this is brilliant. I think we're actually pretty close to a production version. So I'm going to get on and uh, finish this off and then try and get this on sale. Um, I think, um, oops, no, not very good at Manic Miner anymore, but uh, yeah, so I'm going to try and get this on sale as soon as possible. I think we're pretty good to go. Um, the display all works and the space pretty nice. It's quite big. Um, and I've got a few ideas for this expansion port, but that will be in a future video. So thanks for watching. It works and it's fantastic.